You are listening to episode 6 of Leaders on Purpose podcast. Hi there. Welcome to Leaders on Purpose podcast. This is your host, Manal Bernoussi. I am a multi-passionate mom of twins and a corporate executive in Casablanca, Morocco, living and sharing my personal development journey. In this podcast, we're looking to develop the skills, habits, and mindset to reveal our full potential for a greater purpose. I'll be inviting inspiring people, beautiful souls, Moroccans, Canadians, Americans, Nigerians, and more, people from all backgrounds and different nationalities to inspire us to live our true purpose and create great impact. So join me every other Sunday and let's make this happen. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Leaders on Purpose podcast. This is Manel speaking, and I'm so glad to be back today for a new solo episode and to bring on a topic that makes us feel kind of uncomfortable. I'm going to be talking about vulnerability and why we're afraid of it and also how to embrace the power of it. And there is one person who's like the authority on this topic, Brene Brown. She's a social researcher, a professor, and a published author in the U.S. She studied vulnerability and shame for many years, and she has a TED Talk that has over 55 million of views. I'll reference in the notes of this episode some of her books that I absolutely loved, The Gifts of Imperfection, the power of vulnerability, and daring greatly. So I want to share with you some of her findings because, you know, this, this weekend I was in the middle of an MBA session on communication with impact. And we were having this conversation about public speaking or speaking in front of an audience. And we had to go in front of our peers and share a two-minute speech with everyone on any topic of our choice. And some of us were like breaking down, some of us were armoring up, and some of us were being really open and vulnerable. And it is so interesting to see how we all act differently in the face of vulnerability. Speaking in front of people is really a vulnerable moment. The definition Brittany Brown gives to vulnerability is uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure. And it is interesting to see how our reaction to that is so different. One thing is for sure, vulnerability does not leave us indifferent. It either makes us bond with the person that is emotionally exposed, or it makes us feel uncomfortable. So I wanted to break that down and understand why do we struggle so much with it? You know, the reason why most people I would say 95%, maybe more, can't be vulnerable is because they view vulnerability as weakness. I think the biggest myth about vulnerability is that it is weakness. A lot of people were raised to believe that. It was modeled maybe by a parent, by leaders around us. We are in a culture where we see that a lot. That to be vulnerable, to be open, to be exposed is to be weak. And the truth is, what Brene Brown found in her research, several thousands of pieces of evidence, interviews with people, extracts from journals, years and years of research, is that in fact, vulnerability is the greatest measure of courage. Vulnerability is about the willingness to show up and be seen even though there is no guarantee. She says vulnerability is the most accurate measure of courage. She has over 13,000 pieces of data collected over 20 years and she cannot find a single incident or story of courage that was not completely underpinned by vulnerability. When people are asked about vulnerability. They say things like, vulnerability is the first date after my divorce. Vulnerability is starting my own company. Vulnerability 
is taking responsibility for a mistake I did at work and owning it. Vulnerability is sitting next to my wife who has stage 3 cancer and making plans for our younger kids. Vulnerability is asking for a raise. Vulnerability is sharing an unpopular opinion. Vulnerability is saying I love you first. Vulnerability is knowing your kid is into music and has big hopes for joining the school orchestra and supporting him and encouraging him for that, but knowing it's not going to happen. Vulnerability is sharing your music or your art with someone else. Vulnerability is exercising in public, even when you're overweight. Vulnerability is asking for help. It is admitting that you were wrong. It is asking for forgiveness. It is trying to get pregnant after three miscarriages. I just don't see how it can get more courageous than that. This is the world we live in. We live in a vulnerable world. And we need to learn to process it, to, not to tap away from it, to lean into it. And one of the most common examples that came from her research was picking up the phone and making the call to someone who has just had a great loss. You know, the phone is there and you're like, ah, what am I going to say that's going to make it any better? There is nothing that I can say that will make it better except that I am here, I'm hurting with you, you're not alone. Then you go, you know, maybe this is not a good time right now. I'll call in an hour. And a couple of hours later, you say, well, it's dinner time. I'll just put the kids to sleep and I give the call, right? And then what happens when an hour turns into a day that turns into a week and it's a month later and you run into that friend at the grocery store and you didn't call. But then what is the feeling that you get when you do make that call and you hang up? To me, that feeling is when I'm aligned with my values. And courage is one of my values. And you just can't get to courage without walking through vulnerability. Period. So we bought into this myth that vulnerability is weakness. When in fact, it's the birthplace of courage. To me, starting this podcast was definitely a big moment of vulnerability. You get into that spiral of self-doubt. Are my ideas any good? Why would anyone listen to me? There are so many great podcasts out there with great production teams. How would a small podcast from the corner of my desk make any difference? I am expected to fit in. This is not fitting in for a corporate executive. And it goes on and on and on. But you know what? That is just being human. And working through that vulnerability, sitting with it, embracing it, and using it to grow and show up no matter what, is a far greater experience than closing off and tapping away. Braving the risk, the uncertainty, the emotional exposure, daring to lead with it anyway, and coming through the other side, not only does the outcome exceed your expectations and brings you greater connection with people and greater impact also, but it also gets you to experience real life. How many people are out there right now that you're connected to, that they really need to hear your message so that they can process that message and feel like they are accepted? They can feel like, you know what? Yeah, me too. Think about that for a second. Most people are uncomfortable with what's going to happen because they are uncertain. You don't know what people's reaction is going to be. And people want certainty, right? Everybody wants certainty. It's all too risky to open yourself up to people. The, wor the word vulnerable is derived from the Latin word vulnus, which means being wounded, 
or open for attack. And we all want to be strong. We all want to be courageous. We won't allow ourselves to be vulnerable because we think that if we open ourselves for attack, then we will be emotionally wounded. It is emotional exposure. And all of this starts when we are children. Because children are vulnerable. That's like the definition of a child. They don't care what you think. They don't care. It doesn't matter to them. They will go, I'm scared of the dark. I want the lights on. They express their needs. They take risks and do not fear from emotional exposure. But as you get older, you get reprimanded. You learn what you can and cannot do. You learn what you will be accepted for and what you will not be accepted for. And you get raised in society. Then you go to elementary school and you share your secrets with your friends, thinking that they will never tell a soul. And then they tell everybody. And then you learn to close off. Because closing off and not showing your true self is easier than being made fun of. Some people have been wearing a mask for so long, they don't even know who they are anymore. They build up these walls around them. They don't show who they truly are to their friends, to their kids, to their partner. But the thing is, when you close off to vulnerability, you close off to joy. You close off to love and happiness. You cannot close off to certain things. You close off to everything, all of the hardest and the most beautiful parts of being human. Because we are all humans, we all struggle with wanting to be enough, good enough, pretty enough, fit enough, successful enough, smart enough, thin enough, promoted enough, whatever it is. At our core, we're all the same. We're all struggling and trying our best. We want to open up. We do. Every single person, I think, really, truly, actually wants to open up. But the problem is that we are afraid. And fear is what truly holds us back. Some people do not experience joy because they are completely closed off. Some leaders, some fathers or mothers, they modeled that for so long that in their happiest moments... They hold themselves back, not allowing themselves to be 100% joyful. Because they think, maybe I will be stripped away from this one day. I don't want to let myself be so joyful, because what am I going to feel when things get bad? I need to keep myself together. And so they get 80% of the joy instead of 100%, because they're afraid of really opening up. They worry too much. They watch their kids sleep and instead of being 100 fully present with that being or seeing how beautiful that being is, they interrupt those thoughts by worrying about losing that child, by checking if they are still breathing. All parents do that, right? When you have that moment of joy with someone that you truly love and instead of enjoying that moment, you hold back and worry that maybe that person won't always be around. That has a name, actually. It's called foreboding joy. So they're not even fully present with their best moments because they are worried about what could happen in the future. They don't want to let themselves down. So they don't fully experience the most joyous moments. So they build up these walls around them, put their armors on. How crazy is that when we think about it, right? Yet that's what we do, sometimes. Allow yourself to be happy. Be grateful for what you have and honor it. Allow yourself to experience joy. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Stop trying to be perfect. And as a self-admitting and recovering perfectionist, this one is hard for me. Because as perfectionists, we believe that we have to do everything perfect before we put our craft out there, right? But what we are doing in reality is we avoid or minimize the pain by delaying. 
Instead of working through that feeling of self-doubt, we keep perfecting. Perfectionism is not self-improvement. Perfectionism is a mask that you wear as a reason, let's say, for instance, that you're not putting out your music out there. Because you are truly afraid of not being accepted. So you say, oh no, my painting isn't done yet. It is not perfect yet. So I haven't brought them out to the public because I am a perfectionist. No, you are not a perfectionist. You are afraid of not being accepted. You are afraid of failing. You are afraid of success. Perfectionism is a mask that we wear. It's the mask that we wear so that we don't have to truly come in contact with our fears. So I don't let this fool me anymore. When I'm delaying something because I'm waiting for it to be perfect, I try to lean in to that discomfort. I try to let go and detach from the outcome. I give a call to a dear friend to process through those feelings. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm simply bringing in that awareness and I sit with that feeling. In Brene Brown's work, perfectionism is correlated to depression, anxiety, addiction. It is absolutely not correlated to creativity and joy. It is literally impossible to be perfect. Perfectionism is self-destructive. It is an unattainable goal. Remember this quote, done is better than perfect. Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. So getting some things done is better than having them perfect. So how do we embrace vulnerability? I want to talk about that because we need a way out, right? We need to first learn to be comfortable letting our armor down, putting our masks down. Especially now as adults, we need to learn to live with courage to live with purpose and live with connection because we have closed ourselves off for too long. And in relationships, the last thing that we want is for people to see us, to be exposed, right? But the first thing we want in them is to truly see them. Well, that doesn't work that way. Where relationships don't work out like, well, you show me, show me 100% of yourself and I'll show you 50% of mine. We want to know the real them. We want to know the person they hide from everyone else. So in order for you to have true deep relationships with people, you might have to be the first one to open up and be vulnerable. You are the one listening to this episode, not them. And the first step to open up and be vulnerable is to believe that you are enough as you currently are. Can you improve? Sure. But you need to accept that you are good enough right now. You are pretty enough. You are fit enough. You are successful enough. You are rich enough. You are smart enough. Could you be better in all aspects? Absolutely. But you have to accept where you are currently are in order to improve to where you want to be. And just because you might not be where you're, you want to be physically at, for instance, doesn't mean that you can't start looking at yourself as fit enough right now. You have to tell yourself that you are enough because if you are going to be vulnerable with everybody else, well, let's be vulnerable with ourselves first. When was the last time you truly opened up and looked at the mirror and said, I love you? I accept you. You are awesome and beautiful as you currently are. Are we going to improve? Hell yeah, we're going to improve. But before I fix you, I need to accept you. Have you ever done that? Try it, genuinely. Last time I did a gratitude meditation where you scan each part of your body and feel deep gratitude for it. Gratitude for your heart that is pounding for you day in, day out to keep you alive. Gratitude for your feet that keep you up even though you put them through all sorts of uncomfortable suffocating high heels, right? 
You see, we, we take so many things for granted. But feeling grateful for what we are is the first way out. Because when you believe that you are enough, it makes it easier to be vulnerable with other people. Because if you truly believe that you are worthy as you currently are, you don't need that worth in other people. When you fully, truly, 100% accept yourself, you don't give a damn about what other people think about you. Why does that matter? Because then you can open up and be who you truly are and it doesn't matter what other people think about you because you already love and accept yourself. Whether they want to love you and accept you as you truly are, that's up to them. But that has nothing to do with me, whether they accept me. That has nothing to do with you, whether they accept you. You have to allow yourself to be truly happy, to feel real joy, and to stop hiding. So in the upcoming days, I want you to start thinking about how you can break the walls down just a little bit. How can you let yourself experience more joy? Also, another thing that we got to do is we got to stop numbing. You know, all those things we do to avoid thinking and feeling, keeping ourselves busy on Instagram and our phones, everything that we're doing to keep ourselves busy, that is numbing. We're all guilty of this. Exhaustion and busyness is not a status symbol, you guys. The reality is people stay too busy so they don't have to truly feel the feelings of life, whatever that is. The fact that they are not opening up, the fact that they don't feel loved or appreciated, the fact that they don't want to be judged by other people, so they numb themselves. You know, drinking, smoking, being on the phone always, watching Netflix nonstop, being restless. People keep themselves busy so that the truth won't catch up with them to minimize the feelings and also minimize the feeling of vulnerability. The problem is you cannot selectively numb emotions. You cannot select all the bad stuff, vulnerability, shame, grief, and say, I don't want to feel these. I'm going to have some chocolate chip cookies and a couple of beers. You cannot numb those hard feelings without numbing the good ones also. We cannot selectively numb. So when people numb, they numb joy. They numb gratitude. They numb happiness. And then they are miserable. And they are looking for purpose and meaning. And then they have a couple of beers or a box of chocolate chip cookies. And it becomes this dangerous cycle. When you go, I'm actually going to have that piece of cake because I had a really difficult day at work. Well, I'm sorry to say, but that is hiding. Because instead of processing those feelings, instead of working through what happened, you're having that piece of cake instead. You are numbing that feeling. We are numbing the real world because the real world is too much for us to handle sometimes. So if we can start doing these steps, if we can start thinking about how to bring these walls down, about how to bring a real connection between us and other people, expressing our feelings, having those hard conversations. Because what makes us human, what makes us different from other species, is our ability to make deep emotional connections. We as humans are hardwired to want to be connected to others, emotionally, spiritually, physically. We want to be seen. We want to be felt. We want to be heard. We want to be valued. We want to give and receive without getting any judgment. And for that, you have to learn to be comfortable with vulnerability. We have to stop numbing. We have to learn to be the first one to take that step. It is a necessary thing in order to be truly happy in life, to be open and to be seen. It takes courage to take that first step. If you're listening to this podcast, you might need to be the first one because the other might be not listening to this podcast or having 
the awareness that is needed. You have to have the courage. Don't be afraid of being looked down on. The one that is vulnerable is never looked down on. They are always seen as courageous and looked up to. If you see someone being vulnerable, authentic and open on TV, you don't go, ah, what a weak person. If you see someone that is sharing their true, raw, authentic life story, you go, yeah, I feel you. I know what you're talking about. And that is the true connection that we all want. And let me clarify something. This is not about personal disclosure. It is not about laying out all the details of your personal life in the office. It is not about that. There are ways that you can maintain your privacy, but still be vulnerable. There are some vulnerable and authentic leaders who personally disclose very little. And there are some leaders who disclose everything and they are the least authentic and vulnerable people. So for instance, if there's something going on in your life and you're thinking about your coworkers, you're thinking, how can I be vulnerable and authentic if I don't open up and talk about everything, which I absolutely don't feel like doing? You can maintain your privacy and still lean in to that vulnerability. You can some, say something like, guys, I'm really struggling right now. I've got some stuff going on and it's hard and I wanted you all to know. So what support really looks like for me is that I will check in with you if I need something. I will bring it up when it's helpful for me. But I would rather not have to field a lot of questions about it. That's what I need right now. That's it. You're human. You're authentic. You're expressing your needs without hiding away or closing off. Many leaders in the corporate world think that if they allow discussing shame and vulnerability in the office, they would be looked at like being weak or unprofessional. The thing is, in order for transformation to happen, in order for there to be success by any metric, money, stock price, market share, whatever your metric is, you cannot get there without brave leaders and courageous cultures. If your company and your success metric depends on creativity and innovation, and you set up a culture where, where vulnerability is seen as weakness, don't expect great results. Don't expect the creativity. Because innovation, by definition, is idea, iteration, idea, iteration, failure, iteration, and so on. So if you are a leader and you're preaching that vulnerability is weakness or you're modeling that with your behavior, just don't expect great things to happen. Now, as I said, vulnerability is not about self-disclosure. It's not about crying in front of your team. There are leaders that never cry in front of their teams who are very vulnerable and transparent. And there are people that cry all the time who are BSers. Vulnerability is great. Fake vulnerability pisses people off. All I'm saying is, when you are in uncertainty, when you feel at risk, when you feel exposed, don't tap out. Stay brave. Stay uncomfortable. Stay in that cringy moment. Lean into those hard conversations and keep leading. It's not about oversharing. It's not about disclosing everything. It's not about weeping uncontrollably to show how human you are. I'm saying try to be aware of your armors. And when you feel vulnerable, try not to go into transformer mode. Try not to close up. Those are very different things. So let's let ourselves be seen, deeply seen. Let's love and appreciate with our whole hearts, without holding back, even if there is no guarantee and even if it's really hard. And I can say that as a parent. It is really, really difficult. There are some moments where you get no guarantee. 
Let's practice gratitude and joy in those moments of terror when we are wondering, can I love you this much? Is this too good to be true? I better not talk about that promotion or raise or it could all go away. Just stop. Instead of catastrophizing, just stop and say, I am so grateful. I am so grateful because if I am this vulnerable, then it means that I am alive, just fully alive. So that's what I've got for you for this episode. If you like what you hear, please share on social media. I love the fact that you guys send me your screenshots or pictures, listening to the podcast in the car or wherever you are. I love re receiving those. I really do. I appreciate you for doing that so that other people can listen to this content. You know, there is no fancy production team behind me. I don't have a team helping me do this, actually. I'm literally sitting on my desk right now with a microphone and a laptop, and I'm putting this message out there for you to hopefully support you and inspire you. And it only grows when you guys share this message. So I truly, truly appreciate you for sharing it. And if you do share it, go ahead and tag me on Instagram at Manel Bernoussi, all attached. That's M-A-N-A-L-B-E-R-N-O-U-S-S-I. I appreciate you for spending your time and energy with me. And I hope that you have an amazing day. That is it. Thank you so much for spending your most precious asset with me, which is your time. I am so grateful. If you like what you hear, please take a quick second to hit subscribe, write a review, and share with a friend. Spread the love if you think it's something they could benefit from. That will make a huge difference to keep this podcast going. I make it my mission to bring you as much valuable content as possible and absolutely incredible guests. I am back every other Sunday. Thank you so much again for listening, and I hope you have an amazing day. 